Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, welcome. Today I'm gonna to be showing you how I did this chocolate covered strawberry using colored pencils. I did change the sketch up, so I will try to have that available for you down below in the description. And the reference photo will also be available. All the materials that I'm using today will be down in the description as well. If you're liking these more sped up tutorials with voiceover, then please comment down below and let me know. But let's just get into the video. I'm using Prismacolor pencils for this chocolate covered strawberry today. And I'm going to be starting off with the leaves and I'm taking the lime peel pencil and I'm just putting that in the lightest areas that I see in the leaves at the top of the strawberry. And I'm using a light to medium pressure. I always say, you know, you should only use the lightest amount that you need to get the colored pencil to show up. Now I'm taking that apple green and putting it into the mid-tone areas. And I'm starting to define where the, the leaves of the strawberry are. And then I'm going in with my Prussian green pencil and I'm putting this into the darkest areas. And once we blend this out, you'll see it'll make the leaves pop a little bit more. And I'm just going back in with that lime peel just to blend a little bit, still using a light pressure. Now I'm start, starting with the strawberry part and I'm just taking my kneaded eraser and I'm erasing some of the graphite so that it doesn't show through. And I'm starting with my yellow chartreuse and yellow ochre pencil. I'm going to mix these two and use them for the seeds of the strawberry. And I am pushing a little bit harder here, sort of a medium to hard pressure because I wanna burnish this area so that as I'm laying other colors over top of it, and blending them out, they're not going to cover up the seeds as easily. So this is one tip you can use, um, especially for highlight areas too. Um, burnish just a little bit. You don't have to completely press the, the paper down, but a little bit helps. And then it's not as easy for your darker colors to go over top of it. And now I'm doing the exact same thing with my white Prismacolor pencil where the highlight is, I'm just sort of starting to block that in and I'm pushing just a little bit harder so some of the darker colors won't completely cover that up. And I'm taking that pink rose and I'm just glazing over top of some of the white that I've just laid down so that it's not completely white. Not all highlights are completely white. I will go over at the end um, with my white pencil just to sort of bring out the white areas, but not all highlights are, are white. Then I'm taking the Crimson Lake pencil and I'm just going around our seeds and causing those little divots in the strawberry because these are our darkest points and I really want to make sure I get these in now. And depending where the light is on the strawberry, at some points I'm using the Crimson Lake. And then I will switch over once I get to the right hand side of the strawberry to the raspberry pencil as that is more in shadow. And so I'm trying to create a little more depth there. But right now I'm sticking with the Crimson Lake. And I think here, yes, I switched to the raspberry. So if you want your colored pencil drawings to look a little more realistic, it's a lot about lights and shadows. So you want your brights to be really bright and your darks to be really dark, and that's gonna create good contrast in your piece, which will create some realism. Of course, you need an accurate sketch if you can, um, but contrast really helps. So now I'm going in with my permanent red and I'm just gonna start filling in around all the seeds, um, avoiding some of the white areas that I've laid down where the highlight is gonna go. And I'm using that white to sort of 
um, mix in where I've put that pink rose down as well just because I really want those areas to stay brighter and again with the permanent rose And again, you're going to see me switch pencils here. So I'm going back to Crimson Lake um, because, again, the right side of the strawberry is more in shadow. So I'm making sure to have those shadow areas much darker than the other side of the strawberry to really show that contrast. And I'm just blending the two areas a bit there. And I'm taking that raspberry pencil and I'm really going around on the bottom half of the right side there and underneath the leaves just to get even some more shadow and contrast in. And I'm going around some of the seeds again as well just to make sure that they pop. And I'm just going in around the highlight and around those seeds there with the Crimson Lake again. Okay, so now I'm going to take my Gamsol um, Odorless Mineral Spirits to blend out. You can use whatever blending method that you like, but I like this because it gives a really nice smooth result and it gets rid of all the graininess of the paper. So I'm dipping my brush in. And because we don't have a whole lot of pencil down on our paper yet, you can use more OMS to blend out. And I'm always blending from the lightest areas to the darkest areas. But as we go on and we do a second layer or a third layer, depending what your subject is, the more colored pencil you get down onto the paper, you want to use less OMS. So right now I'm going right into the OMS and going right onto the paper. But once you do more layers, you're going to want to dip off some of that OMS because it will start to lift up your colored pencil. So I'm blending those greens. Now I'm going in with a smaller brush and I'm going to start blending the seeds first because I want those to be blended out. So as I'm blending the darker areas, again, they're not going to go over top of the seeds as well. And we had already burnished them slightly. So even when you're blending over with OMS, it's not going to go over top of burnished areas as easily when it moves the color around. And I'm just using Taclon brushes here if you're wondering. Um, I find those are great for blending with odorless mineral spirits. And I'm going in and starting to blend that highlight out. Now you will notice when you're blending with OMS, and you're blending your lights or highlights, you will lose some of the lights a little bit. It will darken up a little bit, but that's when you can go on top again with your white colored pencil or whatever pencils at the end and bring those highlights back out. Now I'm going in and blending out the darker areas around the seeds. And I'm still using my small brush at this point, um, but I will go back to one of the bigger brushes after and just blend the whole thing out to make everything a nice smooth transition. And anytime I'm picking up too much of that red color, you'll see me wiping the brush off onto my paper towel there. And it's just because I don't want to move um, the dark color into places I don't want it. And I'm cleaning that brush off there. And now this is when I'm going in and I'm going between all the seeds and just making everything nice and smooth and transition nicely. I am being a little bit careful around the seeds in the white area but if I go over it that's fine because we can go back in with our colored pencils and bring those areas back out and when you're using odorless mineral spirits like this you do want to give it a good 15 minutes for it to dry before you go on top with any other colored pencils so we'll move down to our chocolate area right now while we let the top part dry. And I'm going to go back in with that white colored pencil 
like I did on top of the strawberry and just start defining where the brightest parts of our highlight is going to be. And I'm pushing a little bit harder, sort of a medium to hard pressure for that. Now I'm going in with my warm gray 20%. And what I want this to do is start transitioning from our bright highlight into the chocolate areas. And then I'm using the French gray 70%. And this is also going to help transition from our highlight to our chocolate area. So it's not so stark, but again, we want our brights to be bright and our darks to be dark. Now I'm taking that chocolate pencil and I'm just putting this in the lightest areas. And I'm starting to define the edge a little bit. So along the edge, I am pressing a little bit harder just so I get a nice def definition there. And I'm sort of focusing this on the left half of the strawberry and a little bit around the highlight. Now I'm taking the dark brown and I'm sort of doing the middle part of our chocolate. The middle third of it. And I'm focusing that there and down on the drip. And then I'm taking dark umber and I'm using that for the other third on the right side. And I'm also going to take a little bit of black raspberry and just glaze over that because I want a hint of that red color coming through, a reddish purplish color in the chocolate coming through. So now that we've got that, I'm going to go ahead and blend everything out again. And I'm starting with the lightest parts again, and I always go from light to dark. So we start with a highlight, and we start working out. And you're going to see how this is just going to start creating a nice smooth transition. And now, because um, you can see in some of the darker areas, it's quite grainy. And with the OMS, it's really going to show now how it creates a nice smooth underlayer. And it gets rid of that graininess. So I'm taking my time and making sure everything's blended out nicely. Now, if you're happy with this, you could stop here. But I always say if you want things to start looking realistic, that's where the next layer comes in because we can start changing our color slightly, defining areas. If we wanted something to be a little darker, a little lighter, or glaze some color over top of it, this is where the fun starts happening. So I'm going back in with those greens, just punching them up a little bit making any changes that I see. Taking that dark green and I'm slightly putting that just a little bit around the red area of the strawberry too because that shadow there is going to include some of the green. Just underneath of where the leaves are going to go, just slightly. Because the green will reflect onto our strawberry as well. Okay, and I'm taking those two colors, the yellow chartreuse and yellow ochre. And again, I'm going in to the seeds and I am pushing quite hard for this. They're just little tiny spots, so I don't mind burnishing them in, but I really want them to be nice and defined. And I'm taking that white again and going out over top of my highlight, bringing back any little white areas that I think I need or adding any in that might need to be added. And I'm going in with that permanent red this time and I'm just going around the seeds and anywhere in between that needs to be brightened up. And I'm taking that crimson light color and doing the same on the right high side of the strawberry. And again, I'm taking that raspberry color and going around on the right side, making it nice and dark. 
but I found I lost a little bit of definition around the seeds here, so you will see me go in with that black raspberry color, and I'll use that around the seeds on the right side of our strawberry. And I think I'm doing that now just to make some of them pop a little bit more. Nope, that's our crimson lake. So I'm really just trying to get, you know, those lights light and those darks dark in here. And here I am coming with that raspberry color. And I'm going to use that around the seeds on the right side of the strawberry just to make them pop like they are on the left side. And a little bit of the shadow under the leaves. And again, I'm going back down to finding that highlight on the chocolate. And I'm sort of using the exact same colors in the same areas because I really liked how the chocolate blended out. I just want it to be a little more defined, a little bit darker, a little bit smoother. So I'm just doing all the same again. And then I will blend it out again one more time. And I think using that black raspberry over top of the chocolate to sort of glaze that color into it really did make a big difference because it now looks like the chocolate belongs on the strawberry instead of just having, you know, completely different color on there just to make some chocolate. And I'm just lightly going over everything again with my OMS just to blend out any areas that still aren't as smooth as I want them to be. And now remember, like I said, you'll see me dipping it off onto the paper towel to get rid of a lot of the OMS that's on my brush, um, just because we do have more colored pencil down on the paper now, and it can lift some of that off. And at this point, I'm not rubbing as much as I did in the first layer to really blend that color in. I'm sort of just lightly tapping over it just to blend out any areas that I really feel need to be blended. And if you like the look you're getting without blending it on your second layer, you can absolutely leave it like that. So again, I'm blending around that white highlight. I want to leave it quite white so I'm not blending over top of the highlight. I'm just blending all the chocolate area around it and blending into it slightly so it's a nice transition. And now we're going to let that dry a little bit, so about 10-15 minutes, and then I'm just taking the white again and just punching up the highlight just slightly anywhere that I think it needs it. And then this project, this tutorial will be done. I really hope you enjoyed this video today. If you did, please be sure to subscribe, like, and comment something down below. It does really help my channel out. And as always, thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.